Okay. Uh, welcome to Furthest Frontier. Uh, I, I absolutely love City Builder games, and I've been wanting to get into this one for videos for you guys. So um, let's hop in. I'm going to try and get into detail on things, but uh, there may be people that were a lot more experienced in the game. This is, you know, my first time going in. Uh, the game has the option of you doing different settings. You've got Pioneer Mode, where you don't have hostile forces. Um, you've got the default Trailblazer, and then you've got Vanquisher, where you can basically get whole armies coming after you. So difficulty can vary quite a lot. I think I'm just going to go for the Trailblazer. Uh, you get average storing resources and hunting. Um, we do get some hostile forces, and we do get healthcare that we have to worry about. We can get some names. Um, we can get some names. Dreadham. Kind of like that already. I want to go for a large map because I think that's cool. Idyllic Valley. So we've got different um, terrain biome sort of things we get. We get uh, Idyllic Valley, lush and fertile valley, abundant in resources and wildlife, perfect place to build a town that's ideal for pioneers just starting out. Get the arid highlands, dry, desolate highlands with infertile soil, sparse pine barrens and wasteland, but rich in mineral deposits. Some things rich, some things scarce. Challenging environment, we've got the alpine valleys, kind of a forest interspersed with lakes and occasional meadows. Very hilly and challenging. Very, oh, I can't speak. Very hilly and challenging to build on, but it is fertile. Uh, we got the lowland lakes, lots of fish. Most, if not all, resources available on the earth is fertile and ready for planting. And then we got the plains, expansive plainland with fertile meadows, dry glass and, and brush, but few forests, lower mineral resources. Uh, and then you can of course do random, which could be interesting. For a first start, it's probably worth going for the idyllic valley. Um, Kind of like going for the random. We can, of course, then go into uh, advanced settings and we can customize things like the resources. Um, so you can choose uh, your initial village account, the amount of food that you come in with, and you know what you have in stock. Uh, maladies, so the amount of disease in the world. Wildlife, the amount of deer, boar, and wolves, and then bears, and then raiders. So you still can get armies in Trailblazer. And in Vanquisher, they're brutal. So you're going to get some elite things and whole massive armies fairly regularly. Um, there you can see we've got a seed. Let's do something a little bit more memorable to type out. Um, we're going to call it My keyboard's being funny. Oh, it only lets us do um, hex letters. It doesn't let us do... Yeah, it's only hexadecimal. Um, let's see if we can think of something hexy. Um, Very mature. <laughs> Life can be harsh everywhere, but in the old world, there was no hope of it ever improving. When our crops failed, the ruling class would still collect the same share, leaving our children to starve. And if we had any coin to our name, the taxman would appear, demanding it for the crown. The nobles hid behind the safety of their walls and did nothing when raiders pillaged the outskirts of the city. And so, some of us decided that it was time to leave, that we'd rather take our chances in the wilderness, seeking the promise of a new land, than starve to death in our homeland. The journey wasn't easy. We lost many along the way. But this wild, unsettled land offers us the hope of a new start as the masters of our own destiny.
welcome to Dreadham. So, um, as I said, it's a city builder. We've got this sort of medieval-ish um, era. We're setting off on our own venture. And um, everyone compares these games to it, but um, it's a banished-ish, you know, harsh thing, build from scratch uh, kind of thing. Though it's its own thing, and I think it gets a lot of things done smoother. Uh, still early access. Many people have been enjoying this game, and I am keen to start up a good playthrough in here. So let's see what our new world looks like. Remember, this was with the random settings, so we have no idea what it's going to look like. I'm hoping we can last. I'm hoping we can create a beautiful new place. Here we go. We finished scouting the surrounding area. Survey the land your villages have exposed and choose a promising site to construct your town center. It's important to choose a location that's near the resources you'll need to build a successful settlement. Things like clay, iron ore, and potential food sources. Can we just pause while they're doing that? Um, I might have to adjust the UI scale so you can see things. Um, so we can do the uh, F4 thing to see all the different keyboard, um, yeah, all the different resources, arrow keys, and also then right mouse to scroll. We've got some wolves up in there on our heels. You can press the G key. I think this is desirability. Yep. Um, and then we've got the I key for groundwater, for putting wells, and then F for fertility, where we want to grow stuff. Let me just go into settings, and I want to... Um, I just want to scale up the interface a little bit because I am playing at a higher resolution. 1.5 is generally pretty good for these sort of things. And I want to check some settings, controls. What is pause? Is there pause space? I did press space. Can we not pause in this pre thing? I hope our guys don't starve while I scour the map. So I want to see, do we have any water? A lot of flat land over here. Is this very fertile? Yes, it is. Got some sand over there. Um, birds' nests there. Got this cool little mountain in the middle of here. I, ah, wait, there we've got some water over here. Okay. I was thinking we don't have any water. And we've got a little bit more mountain on this side. Ooh, no, that's quite a bit more mountain. So, I feel like we do want to be near water to start out with. Um, now we've got this little valley between two mountains. It's kind of cool. Maybe for some defensibility. We do have a wolf down here. Greens, patches of herbs, medicinal roots, blueberries. I know we can move those later. We've got some nuts, mushrooms. We've got sand pit over here. Now, do we have any actual mineable resources nearby? Because that might make it a difficult spot. This might be fairly difficult playing on a random map. Iron ore over here. We've got deer in this sector. We do have iron ore behind us here. We do have that sand. Um, there is more iron ore over here and we have more things. We have a wolf den on this mountain so we actually kind of do want to steer a bit clearer of that. We do have another sand pit over there. Sumac. There are lots of deer in this forest here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really just trying to pick a good site. I'm wondering if there is perhaps a little bit water behind us here. No, ooh, wait, we can sort of see trees if we hover over the highlighting, nothing. So we can figure out if there is some water outside our view there. Cheesing it a little bit. Assuming that is accurate, we can see that this pond is 
fairly extensive, goes around up over there. This is absolutely cheesing it. If they really wanted to be hardcore, they would disable um, highlighting things in the fog of war. So that's another check thing. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's much water here at all. So I think we do need to start somewhere around here. There are wolves. I'm wondering if there's perhaps another den um, behind here. We have, ah, there we've got some gold over here. I was wondering if we would have some. The only thing I haven't seen, I think, is coal. I believe we should have coal somewhere. So we might have to rely on charcoal. I wonder if my people are starving uh, while I do this, because I cannot space pause in this. I would like that, it just feels more secure. Um, okay, so we want to do just some look. Desirability, I don't think that makes any difference until you actually build something. Though I do wonder if that changes near the wolf den. It does not. Okay, we've got then the, the groundwater. If we stick to the lowlands, there's actually tons around these hilly areas is not. So I think definitely starting near the water is a good idea. And then fertility, it's super fertile. So we don't want to actually build our buildings in the fertile area because that's where we're going to want to plant our stuff. So what we would want to do is probably put ourselves um, maybe even starting on I do want to be near the water because we get some bonuses for building near there. I have watched some things of this game, so I am aware. Um, I don't want to put our things near the, the sand, too near the sand, because um, that's not going to be the nicest place to live. Probably going to cut out a lot of this because I'm faffing about. Um, nope. But right, we're going to do it. I'm just going to pause now, because now, as you'll see, now that we've placed down our town center, our view has shrunk just down to what is visible near us. Is there a keyboard shortcut for hiding the UI? Right bracket. Turn off our things. Beautifully lush game though. I, I love how dense the foliage in here is. They've made it really nice because it's performing, it seems, pretty well. I don't have an FPS counter up at the moment, but I think I'm, I'm getting a pretty good performance at 4K uh, with max quality. I might be slightly below 60 FPS at the moment. Um, but that is not bad at all. It is beautiful. I generally probably will play with the F4 key displays on, unless we want to actually see stuff, because you can just, I just like having information. Um, and then the, seeing the status of our people is always nice. Um, though I think we can keep it off because it does get a little bit busy. I'm not sure what the F2 overlay is. That might only show up when we have buildings. Um, that's fine. I love when we've got all these different shortcuts. Um, so we are currently in early spring. It's cold, we're a light breeze, and now we need to start thinking what we need to do. Food and shelter, of course, are our priorities. So they're going to construct their town center over here. So we want to go look at the basics town center actually needs to finish constructing, it seems, before we can even do that. Oh, no, we, we can do food. So Hunter's Cabin, we had some deer around here. What I do want to be aware of is um, the market does give a bonus to gold if it's near things. So we probably want to build our market near where we have our um, a bunch of our different buildings. But since we've got deer over there, we probably want to get some hunters going. 
So I think we're going to start off by putting you there. For a shack, I'm going to keep you nearby that as well. We have hazelnuts, hawthorns, bird's nests, nuts. I think we already had some nuts. So nuts and hazelnuts are different and we've got patches of herbs and greens. So we've got a lot of things. We might even want to put two different forages, but I think I'm going to plonk this next door to our hunters. We can move this uh, area a little bit later. Now fishing, we want our just to take advantage of the maximum area. You can see when we place the building nearby, you can see there's fishable areas. Um, I think we can just focus on our hunters for now because we're not quite near the shore. Crops, we do want to get that started. Um, and we've got this land over here, which is going to be great for that. Though that might take over spaces for some of these herbs and things there. Herbs, as the Americans like to say. We do want to get that started, though, because is a process. I'm just going to make a minimum sized one over here. Maybe slightly larger than minimum. You can also extend these after construction, so maybe we don't go too crazy. Five by twelve. Um, thing you need to consider also is the um, animals can go in and get into your farms as well. So, do people go get water out of the the lake? Maybe I don't know. Um, definitely, having multiple is important. I think. So I'm going to put one there. I know I'm doing all these things like super early, but. Eh. Okay, we can finally start on pausing. <laughs> Once this is done, then we'll start building our, uh, wood choppers and things. Um, I just want to get a basic idea of the resources that we have available before we even get things going. You see, when we start going into these industrial things, um, they suck away desirability. I'm wondering if we go... more industrial... the side the way we want to keep those deer going. I might put our wood chopper there for now. You can also move buildings. We mustn't forget that, so... It's kind of good. Um, we can now set ourselves to harvest stuff. Um, I'm going to say trees and stones in this area. Can't build housing until this is finished. Here we go. And here we can build our first shelters. So these are the basic ones. We kind of want to go away from 
industrial things. So I'm thinking maybe we do our first houses. We build a block of houses here. Um, this can all change later on. Each shelter, it seems, can hold four people. Or a household can be four people. Predator sighted. Villager attacked by predator. Now, are they going to team up and fight it? Yes, they are. Oh, can't we tame him instead? No, that's fair. He attacked. Oh, we can even go down to half speed, that's cool. Got our wood chopper. I'm sure you'll agree, this is a really beautiful game. And deep, you'll see when we get into the farming and stuff just now. Currently, everyone is really happy. That's great. We need to do something about our food spoilage. Um, what has become unlocked now? We do have the stockyard available. I might just put that here in our sort of uh, new industrial quarter. And we can put decorations which make uh, desirability increase for uh, people's homes. Um, desirability changes, you know, if they're going to upgrade their buildings and how happy they are and all that sort of stuff. Um, you'll see it's a requirement for um, upgrading the buildings and stuff. Get to higher tier buildings, not just these uh, super basic shelters. They don't even have a door, you see, and they're just good hides hanging up there. I've got a nice little pot over there, a little poiki. More people await word to join your settlement. A mess of four months supply of food and six houses. Then we get some more people. So we need two more houses and a lot more food. Now what we can do if I find some blackberries, what was it, blueberries? Uh, uh, you can also move those closer. Sumac. I don't actually remember seeing many on the map. Not near here. But here's one weakness of our current location because they are a great source. There we go, we've got some blueberries over here. So these guys, we can take this and we can say, you, we want to take you, and we've got our uh, gatherer over here. We can put this, um, where is the actual building plot? Pop you down there. You, I'm going to move you. So this way we've got our stuff here, and you know, people don't need to go so far. It's, uh, as far as I know, it's the only the blueberries that you can do this with. It kind of does make sense um, as berries are hardy plants and you can do some vine growth and propagations with them. So, um, yeah. If we see any more, that would be great. You can see as people start going into this corner, you have to pick up these blueberry bushes. And you can see more stuff that we didn't get to see before. We've got hazelnuts down there. And they're busy clearing out the land here for our farm. Hunter cabin, you see we can also um, move the work radius, so where they go to hunt. And we can see that we've got deer further away, so we can also just say, you know, well, you don't need to hunt in town, hunt a little bit out of town. What is Hawthill? Um, red berries. In times of desperation, Hawthill and berries are one of the last remaining food sources for settlers. So this is just a hardy, not amazing, but uh, prevalent thing. Food stocks are low. I am aware 
we might want to actually create more um, these guys we can tell also them to get to our building here come on where is our building site um, and there is a prioritized button over here and we can say get your asses in line finish this damn thing you need to eat let's check how many people we've got working on hunting we've got one of one and then we will get our forager up so maybe we do want to build our fisher sooner rather than later because again the farms are going to take ages to do Okay, forager shack is up. You can also like you know specify what we want them to forage if we would like. I think I'm also just gonna build another one. What is sumac? Uh, seasonal berries, not not an efficient food source. These berries are small and not pleasant to eat plain, but they are a source of vitamins. So that is something we can look at our people and um, I believe there is some sort of nutrition, I... not certain. Kalar, laborer, age 20. Oh, look at this. Now, unfortunately, um, we've come to a little bit of a hiccup because uh, as you'll see, um, we've got a bunch of leaves falling off the trees, which means we're coming into early autumn now. So our farm can go on the back burner because uh, we're down to foraging at the moment now. Did our berries get put down? Um, all of them except for the one. Now, as you see, they don't have any berries left. Our food did go up a little bit, but uh, not great. We sort of borderline, and we'll be straddling that for quite some time, I think. We've got a fair amount of firewood, though. Um, clay. Do we need clay pits? cannot remember I think we might do and I did not see any of those um, I believe we can go in here um, for the resources and we can say um, well, we don't have them available so that makes it a little bit more difficult but I think it does highlight the resources if you do have the building freezing and a strong breeze so soon we're gonna get the snow forming on the ground we might also want to build a um, smokehouse for preserving meat. This we want to keep away from our living area. So we might make sense to just put it opposite the, the woodcutter because we've already got low desirability there. Here you can see we've got foods split up into proteins, grains, vegetables, fruit and dairy. So I don't know if it's uh, behind the scenes uh, doing a little bit of a nutrition calculation for the the health of people. I haven't actually looked that in depth into that sort of aspect of the game, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I should probably connect these roads up. So if we look at this, we've got... Um, Laborers, builders, one person set to firewood, three farmers. Let's fulfill that smoker. Construction has been halted due to winter. Yeah. As I said, farm goes into the back burner. New villager immigrated. 
new settler named Brusilla has arrived, attracted by the great prosperity of your town. So that you have surplus food and housing to attract more. So now we're up to 13 pop. Happiness is still great in the town. This forager is a foraging and nothing. Uh, all these things are barren. But that's just seasonal, you see, everything is everything is empty except for a few deer over here. Uh, how is fishing going? We've caught 358 fish. So that's a not too bad. Just that little area there. Uh, we might want to build a road down this section. Where is the border of the farm? And here we go, our first bit of snow. Winter has come. sure why they're not doing that blueberry maybe because it's in water anyway um, we're in winter um, everything slows down just a little bit as long as we've got enough firewood to keep people warm we should be fine we do have seven months of food which is enough to get us through the winter for now and if we do then we've made our first year which is Probably the hardest, um, and from then on we're going to have more technology and more ability to do things, so let's see if we make it through. I think we might need to actually uh, chop down some trees. Look at that. We have made it over the hump. And we have entered a year number two. And two new villages have arrived. So that is the beginnings of our new settlement in Hervis Frontier. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I am enjoying it so far. We just barely scratched the surface of this game. But it is awesome. I am looking forward to playing a lot more of this. Because we can go really far. We can create a whole renaissance town in a way. So, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, let me know uh, what you'd like to see more of. Um, there are plenty more city builders as well I would like to play. And I have some other games planned up for the future as well as making my own. So we'll see what happens. And uh, thanks for joining in. See you next time. Bye. I can't do this. I can't get it under my monitor. That's as low as I can freaking scroll. And also no option to switch it to, even in the Windows settings, changing my audio to come from 
a different audio source is not working and there's no option in game to change it. And I can't change the resolution to fit onto my monitor. Uh, it starts, I've got a dual monitor set up and it starts on the wrong monitor and I cannot change to get it on the other monitor. Let's quit. Anyway, maybe. Nope. Yes, it's early access, I know. But this is like a basic game feature. I'm going to have to do some like weird ship like ship stuff like, um, hmm, wait, maybe that'll work. Okay, I can't get my uh, normal uh, resolution, but I can go to uh, 1440. Huh? Okay, and it, the audio is coming from the correct source now after closing and reopening the game. Okay, so there's a, a little bit of uh, issues. Um, we can deal with it. Yeah, okay, we can get our 4K there. Look, other than that, it's got some really nice options in the game. Um, probably only an issue for people with multi-monitor things and who are doing recording and who want to switch their audio and stuff.